What is up, guys? Iggy here again with Valtech Unlimited. It is 10.30 Wednesday night. I am still going. I've been in the garage since 9 a.m. I try to get in here for 9, so yeah, 12 hours right now. Um, I will probably be in here till 2 or 3 in the morning. I got work to do. If you notice, yeah, it's a little chilly in here, but I had to change my shirt. I was editing the last video. I grabbed a blanket that was on the ground, picked it up, threw it on the couch, laid on it, did my thing got up and then all of a sudden felt something wet in my back so took it off and apparently one of my puppies peed on the blanket so is what it is can't fault them my fault for not bringing them out so anyways um we are doing a very very poetic holster today it is uh it's for the fnx 45 tactical with the x300 and i just so happened to have it right here and uh, this is the blue gun version YouTube this is not a functional firearm it is solid and you don't have to delete my videos so uh, however this x300 is a real flashlight beware now if you were not aware you can actually go on wish.com and you can buy this flashlight for 80 bucks yes 80 bucks is it a real x300 absolutely freaking not but the insides are completely different. This is only like a 100 lumen flashlight. It is cheap piece of Chinese crap. But the outside is an X300 flashlight body. Same specs, everything. So you could drop $400 or more on a uh, Streamlight, or, sorry, Surefire X300. Or Wish.com, wait two weeks, and you now have a piece of crap that you don't it doesn't matter because it's just for fitting now this is going to be a quick uh, build a quick video when i get more than a handful of orders for a particular combination i will order the pale horse mold so obviously fnx 45 with x300 ultra i have the uh pale horse form for that but we're gonna have to add a whole bunch of stuff to it uh, this is gonna be a quick vac vac form uh bing bang boom done and this is going out to uh, Carlton, Texas. So right hand black Safari Land mid drop with the uh, Spetz Gear Speed Lock hood. This new batch I got uh, seems to be absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to go ahead, clean my bench because the last video you saw was the FNX 45 with the balder. I can now disassemble all this and uh, move on to the next one. So I'm going to clean this real quick and we're going to build. Make something pretty. Mwah. Now, let's build. If you couldn't already figure out, I already have my heat press on. In fact, I never shut it off. So it is currently at 390 degrees for the sum of 150 seconds. And we're going to be doing a standard black. This particular size of um, mold is going to be a 12 by 12 inch. And by the time it comes out, it's going to be around 370 degrees. So let's get some mold prep got done and get this holster the F out of here. So pretty much first things first, when you do uh, this, when you get your mold, I like to take the trim jig and just do an outline. Uh, that outline shows me that um, I will have all of my material within the limits of the shell when it's uh, getting, you know, getting uh, trimmed. Uh, so we're going to be doing this guy with this guy, which means we're going to need this, this, or this. I made this one. I purchased that one. And I'm going to need this right here. Now, this one and this one you can find at holstersmith.com. They sell these. And these ones I personally make. I get the flat stock from Home Depot and I just go ahead and make a plethora of blocking that uses for anything. Uh, you could also get T blocking, um, which also fits inside here. This is a thinner version. You can see the thicknesses. I personally like to run thick because of the hardware I use. And here's something for foamies as well. I very rarely use that one. But just so you know, you can get a lot of this blocking already preformed and drilled from Holstersmith. Dot com. So um, now for this guy, I know that with the hammer down and doing so much, this little bump has to go at least no further or no, well, actually, yeah, no further past halfway of this uh, rear sight. So line this up. And, you know, what I 
could do is actually uh, mark down where it's gonna go so I don't have to keep doing this every time. But I've done this build so many times, I know for a fact that this, it just sits perfectly right there and that's where we're gonna want it. Um, if you notice it does this, we're gonna go ahead and pop something underneath it, get something that is the same thickness as under, which is gonna be that guy right there, and then tape it all in place. I'm personally just using thin stuff right here. And I'm gonna need this. Don't poke yourself like I just did. And I like to go down flat. Now, there is a possibility that when you do something like this, it will uh, get sucked up into the mold, no big deal. Uh, you have your options. But this works pretty good for me. And then what I'll do is I'll just cut one in half. And then I'll go that way, that way. Let's go that way. Alright, that's set. Now, let's do this. If you notice it wiggles so we're gonna have to bump it up on one side and then bump it up on the other uh, that's where that's gonna come in and you want to make sure that we have plenty of room so this is gonna go the right around this area here and we have to figure out what we want to put underneath it is that gonna be enough that looks like it is and what we'll do is we'll set this to where we want it and it looks like right there will be good now i'm looking at this from the edge let me show you what i'm talking about see how it's crooked i don't want that right right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a bigger spot right there that way we're good so let's take that out put a larger one in and let's Bump that up right there. Oh, like it was meant to be. So we're going to move this up. Like I said, kind of do a test fit. This is going to be suspended. That is perfect where it sits. And I'm going to go ahead and lock this in place with a good amount of tape. And if you notice that these are well within the lines right here. And if you notice, I'm not going... This side, I'm going to go directly down this thicker side. I'm just going to bump it out so it kind of has an angle down. You can do the Play-Doh trick if you want. It's not necessary because the way we have this built, this is actually easy to block out. There's okay, that. And then you got to make sure you get underneath it. And I'll show you a couple tricks I do to help you out along the line along the way all right get that there get this here all right now i personally will find the hole open them up that way your kydex will dimple so you know where to drill. I will not do these because I'm gonna laser cut those and I will show you that later on in the video. Next is gonna be this guy. And you know what, we can do Play-Doh for this one. So actually I'll show you how to do both. Oh, might not, I have Play-Doh drying somewhere. So we'll see. Um, so when doing this, it's going to, nope, not enough. Let's try that again. Well, that actually came out pretty good right there. So let me cut that off. Cut that. Cut that. There we go. Throw that back in the bin. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead. I'm not going to push down too much on it because I don't want to deform it. I don't know what that is. 
All right, and then make a piece long enough to stretch it. Cutting it in half, and that's gonna go on this side right here that has the gap. Now, we are ready, so I'm gonna cut a 12 by 12 of black. You can use this stuff if you want. You've seen it on other videos. It is called Apel Mold Release. It is uh, part number BK380. Uh, you could actually take it and just do a quick splurt on everything. And uh, it's like a, all it is is a silicone lubricant and it's a mold release and it allows the Kydex to come off a little bit better. Um, that way it actually helps in the fact that this won't come off with it. So if you're doing multiple pulls on it, this is what you'd want to do. Everything stayed. Bada bing. Let's cut it. All right, so the same size as the retention, I'm going to drill the first three holes on the safari land. And after the fact, so you can see. Retention, retention, first three holes, all the same. I'm gonna deburr them in a second. And then the top one is gonna go quarter inch along with these guys right here. And that's all I'm drilling right now because I don't know the drill point of this one. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the holes. Make sure you clean the inside as well. I know I don't need to, but a quick verification, uh, you want these right here to disappear when you put this on. All right, and they do. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut it and trim it, and we'll be right back. Now, on 90% of my rigs that have a hood, I will actually put a gusset in to strengthen it up because uh, really uh, what I found is the only material that doesn't flex is 0.125. So it's got a little bit of flex in it. So what I'll do is I'll actually cut that out, drill it, and I'm going to set it with eye loops. And now that this is all built, you can see everything. Oh, ah, I realized it's, oh, damn it. Even though you won't see it, I know it's there. I'm going to go ahead and take that out and, and uh, swap it. So, ah, I didn't even notice that. Anyways, everything else looks good. So I'll go ahead. These are flush cutters. I actually had to do this in the last video as well. All I'm doing here is getting underneath the edge of the lip and squeezing so it makes the outer diameter smaller than the hole it's in. You can drill it too, you need a really sharp, uh, sharp bit, but if you don't do it just right, what will happen, oh, I need to get bigger flush cutters, what will happen is, uh, there we go, 
the eyelet will move around on you. And then what it'll do is it'll just pull right through and ruin you. I put this plate on, I heat it up so it's bent, and now there is no more flex in here. I also clean the edges all the way around and we're getting ready to assemble. Uh, before I assemble, it's just much easier if I go ahead and take the hardware and throw it in. These are half inch threaded posts and these are half inch rubber spacers or point four three seven five or something like that. It's half inch or just the size below it because I don't think half inch was available. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold it. And here we are. We are folded. It is nice and cool. I got this on here. And like I said, it's a, it's a lot easier to put that on than reaching your hand in. So that's why I do it prior. I'm going to go ahead and get all this because we don't need it. I'm going to set the retention. Now this is quarter inch. Quarter inch. And these are 3 sixteenths, I believe. They're the next step up from a quarter inch. Get those in there. And then these screws are 0.4375. If I can grab it. There we go. And I've noticed that with pale horse molds, retention is pretty good when it's flush. My light moved. All right. No, that's awesome. I forgot I did that. All right. So next, let's go ahead and let's mount the hood. So we're gonna, not going to do the QLS because, or not the UBO, because we won't be able to get anything else on. So I personally, I keep the long screws. You keep the small screw. Grab one of those. I discard the rest. I'm going to put all three in here. Don't forget your magic blue juice. Okay. I hold all three with my two fingers. Throw that on there and just start one, start two, start three. Now, do not over tighten these. because it will cause the hood not to work. Okay, there we go. Kind of like that, a little, apparently that was a little tight. So what I'll do is I'll loosen this up. Uh, it wasn't even that tight. But that's the, that's the only thing that sucks about these is they need to redesign the inside. All right, and then what I'm also going to do, is so take this, and where it rotates, I like to lube up. Much better. So, you guys out there that are having issues with your hoods, possibly stick in, throw some oil on the rotating joints. And it should make, see, world of a difference. All right. And what I'm doing now is I'm making it go directly across, marking it. Well, I'll hold it in place. And then I will mark it. Go ahead and drill that same size that you use for your retention. Clean that hole on the outside and grab our Noga RC2000. Clean the inside. Take your small hardware that you got with it, throw that in. And that's going to bottom out on the screw, and that's what you want. Clean that off. Now, I will swap over to my hex head and get all the Safari Land attachment hooked up. And like my father always taught me growing up when working on, uh, you know, like a rector set and everything like that, 
Don't ever tighten everything until everything is in place. So don't tighten all your screws until all your screws are in place. Now that will that'll stick with me as, as long as I live. So there's one, two, three. It is not touching there. All right, so throw that out. Here is a Safari Land mid drop FNX 45 tack with X300 with speed lock level two hood. Thank you guys for watching this video. Vac form is definitely the way to go when building holsters, especially when you have to build multiple ones over and over and over. Uh, I mean, this right here, just look how, look how beautiful that came. Now, when you order these from Pale Horse, you can order them with or without this. I choose to have it just in case, but that extra bend, believe it or not, it actually adds rigidity and strength to the holster, which is why I don't mind them. And uh, honestly, if somebody asks for um, J clips or uh, ulti clips, this is, works perfect and I could add blocking somewhere else for it. Uh, but again, Spets Gear level two hood on a Safari Land mid drop, FNX 45 tactical. This is beautiful, and this is heading out to, like I said, Carlton, Texas, and I hope the gentleman loves it. So, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Let me know what you like to see on this channel. I'm going to be doing a whole lot more builds. I really want to ramp up the amount of builds that I do. Also, if you're in the car scene and you're interested to see what else I do other than holsters, visit my other holster channel. I'm only I'm less than 200 subscribers into it. I haven't been really active on it in a while because downstairs has been such a... A dreadful dark area that I haven't done a lot of work down there just because I couldn't see but I just installed a ton of lights I'm about to install a lot more so I'm gonna have a lot more videos going down with the car so uh, you'll see 1970 Plymouth Cuda 1974 Roadrunner my chopped 54 Buick and I got a uh, 68 uh, Malibu convertible 327 that I'm gonna be working on for a friend we're about to pull the motor and rebuild it also powder coat that so you're gonna see all that stuff on my other channel uh, if you support this channel, I would love if you support the other channel. If not, no big deal. I still hope the best for you. But get out there, bend some Kydex, make some money, make some good relationships. I will talk to you later. Make good choices. See you later. Love you. Bye.